As the Vancouver Canucks really look to fill up their roster for next season, one question that should really be asked is whether or not bringing back the hardworking winger coming off a conference final appearance with the New York Rangers, who is a free agent this offseason, is a good idea. So here are some pros and cons of re-signing Tyler Mott to an extension with his former team. Let's get into the pros first and then let's get into the cons. So the pros, let's talk about how he's familiar with the organization. So one question that is also asked when bringing in new players is how they will adapt to the team's lineup. And luckily with Mott, that question does not have to be answered as he has spent the majority of his career with the Canucks playing 196 games since the 17-18 season. And whether it was Travis Green or Bruce Boudreau, it doesn't matter which coach who was behind the bench. He was a player that Vancouver relied upon heavily and whether it be at even strength or on the penalty kill, he performed to his best abilities and those best abilities turned out to be a really really big thing for the Canucks because he was a very important piece of both sides in both aspects of the game. With Juho Lamiko and Matthew Highmore both expected to be back, bringing in Mott would allow the Canucks to reunite one of their most consistent lines from the 21-22 season and no line played more together than these three clocking in just under 260 minutes together. And in that time, they outscored the opposition 14 to 4 while outshooting their opponents 122 to 111. And in comparison, Lamenko and Highmore really struggled without Mott. And the duo played 110 minutes together and were outscored 6 to 1 at even strength. They were outshot, outchanced, and saw their on ice shooting percentage go from 11.48% to 2.44%. So it is safe to say they missed their hardworking winger. Another pro is that the Canucks need players like Mott because. If you really consider one thing the Canucks desperately need to add next season, it's got to be speed. And to play Boudreaux's style of hockey, they need to add fast wingers that can get on the forecheck and pressure really quickly. And that is one of the main reasons why Mott was so trusted and was playing so consistently while he was in Vancouver. Off the ice, Mott is a great ambassador for the team, which led him to become a fan favorite. From opening up about his mental health struggles to his support of women's hockey, he is the type of person teams should want to represent their brand, honestly, because... While character does not appear to be on the score sheet, it's something that should be considered when bringing someone to a team. And on the ice, Mott is exactly what a team wants in a fourth liner because he isn't afraid to get in on the forecheck. He can throw hits very easily. He can block shots and create takeaways. While his offensive game doesn't blow the doors off anyone, producing 50 to 20 points, it's still a good production from a fourth liner. And it was clear from watching the fourth line after he left that the Canucks missed all the intangibles he brought, which could entice a reunion, which could entice a reunion this offseason. And let's now get into the cons. Well, the first con is the cap hit, and the Canucks are looking to dump as much cap space as possible this season which can make a Mott signing very problematic because last season he had a cap hit of 1.225 million which was a fair deal for both sides considering what he brought to the table now after a long playoff run and a potential interest from other teams the Canucks may have to pay over double his cap hit as his contract production comes up to just under 3 million per season with Michael Furland expected to be on long-term injury reserve next season the Canucks have a projected 13 million dollars available this offseason and they also need to sign Brock Besser, Lamenko, Highmore, Jack Rathbone, and make decisions on players like Brad Hunt, Alex Jason, Brad Richardson, and Brandon Sutter. So cap space is clearly very tight, so there may not be even enough room in the budget to bring back Mott, even if the Canucks want to do so. Another con I want to talk about was limiting prospect development, because fans and the organization want to see young players with the organization get a chance in the NHL. And not only will prospects fight hard to keep their spot in the lineup, but their cap hits are also relatively low, which helps the Canucks in their long run. Because Vancouver has brought in some intriguing prospects from Sweden this offseason already and brought recently a guy from Russia, we'll be talking about Kuzmenko. Uh, you guys should go check out that video as well. Having a spot ready for them on the roster could pay dividends for the organization if they bring in Tyler Mott. And of course, there is William Lockwood, who has shown he is ready to make the jump to the NHL. And if Mott returns to Vancouver, it could block him from becoming an everyday NHLer next season. Unless the Canucks move players like Niels Hoglander and Cardinal Garland or Tanner Pearson don't retain NHL players in those deals, there may not be enough roster spots to go around. And while having Mott does provide value, he does take up a valuable lineup spot that could go to a deserving young player. So there's a lot of tough decisions being made for Vancouver right now. And there is obviously numerous factors when deciding if the Canucks should bring back Mott from financial consideration, prospect development, to even if he wants to return to Vancouver. All of these factors will play a massive role in deciding if he returns. One thing is clear though, he is a fan favorite and would be welcomed back if the two sides come to an agreement in free agency. So Canucks fans, let me know in the comments what you guys think about Tyler Mott potentially returning to Vancouver. Thank you guys for watching and have a wonderful day.